Hello and welcome back to Vampire. Now, it didn't put us back inside a safe house this time. Find a way into Darius Petrescu's house. Okay. Oh, Camellia. It's very dark and broody, isn't it? The atmosphere here, perfect place for a vampire. I wonder if we get to go inside that church. Good evening, Christina. Change your mind, Mr. Reed? Let's see if she's got any other info. Tell me about yourself. Are you joking with me? People don't usually come to see me for conversation. I have no interest in your work. <laughs> Short story. The war, exile, and England. This country is not especially welcoming. I've been refused many jobs because of where I am from. I had few options left. I can't remember if... Oh, we haven't seen this one before. I always thought I was the master of my own fate. But now I know we don't always have control over our lives. I don't judge you. You know, this money is not only for me. I have good reasons to need this money quickly. But it is not your concern, Doctor. Mm. Do you need any assistance, Miss Popper? Your money is the only thing I... Tell me. Are you? I have. I always. You know. Clayton Darby claims he will expose the crisis in Whitechapel to all of London. Do you believe him? I believe Clayton's courage will erode with time until he finally leaves Whitechapel to start another fight somewhere else. Are you talking from experience? I've seen your type come here to get a good fuck in a cheap room or a dark alley before going back to their fancy houses in the West End. Why this skepticism? How can you speak about starvation if you've never been hungry? Or about poverty? Or anything else you have never suffered from? Christina, have you been examined? The epidemic is spreading fast in London. And you could be exposed, or expose others. I don't like doctors, or hospitals, but I don't like you asking questions. Considering your line of work, I assure you it is only a matter of time before you have health issues. If it is going to happen, it will happen. Right now, I need money. That's what's important. You can put your own life in danger, that's your decision. But what about your clients? If you're contaminated, you will put them in danger too. And you think that would worry me? If you knew the men I deal with, their health would not be what you'd worry about. Do you know Nurse Dorothy Crane from the Pembroke Hospital? Anything you can tell me about her would be helpful. I don't know her. But I know her name is Dorothea Krasionescu. She came from Romania like me and many others. You seem to respect her. Dorothea helps the sick people of Whitechapel. Everyone should respect that. Hmm. I think I remember now we sort of bypassed her, didn't we? Goodbye, miss. Take care of yourself as best you can. Yeah, we bypassed her, I think. But we're going to find the guy in the church. Um, how about the priest over here? Did we do? We bypassed him too, did we? 
Good evening, Mr. Whittaker. It's Father Whittaker, my son. So, are you still lost in your rational delusions? Do you know Nurse Dorothy Crane from the Pembroke Hospital? I'd like to know more about her. I don't like the liberal ideas of nurses, but I especially abhor that Nurse Crane you mentioned. Why do you hate Nurse Crane more than other nurses? Before coming to London, she was a member of the communist resistance in her country. That's what happens when you let a woman get involved in politics. So, you're not exactly a fan of Florence Nightingale's work. But nurses are essential for modern healthcare. Nuns should be the only women allowed to take care of male patients. It's obvious only they have the necessary moral fibre. Is it obvious, is it? Don't you fear getting sick yourself? I've been touched by God's grace. I am perfectly healthy. Have you any friends? Any family left in these terrible times? No. But I have a disciple I see as my son. He is so devoted. I send him to preach the good word in the heart of this corrupted city. I wonder if that's the guy that we rescued right at the start who's sitting in the hospital. You sent him on some preaching crusade during the epidemic. As a true believer, Samuel will fear no evil while he walks through the valley of the shadow of death. Where did you send him? I sent Samuel to the Stonebridge Cemetery, where the pestilence and evil grows night after night. What do you mean when you say that I am more lost than you thought? All scientists are entangled in a world of causes and consequences. And most of them can't see the plain truth. Quite a judgmental opinion, if you ask me. But what do I know? Blinded by science as I am. But you are seeking answers, aren't you? Answers about the Armageddon about to strike the city. Answers about the hidden truth. Well, I suppose I can spare a few minutes listening to your so-called truth. As a doctor, you must be aware of a decimating epidemic. But let me tell you that this so-called Spanish flu is just the beginning of the end. What do you mean? The beast is finally revealing itself, corrupting the flesh and the heart of men. With my own eyes I have seen them, those minions from the abyss. Really? And what would be your answer to this biblical threat? We must fight the disease before this legion outnumbers us. But not with scalpels and microscopes. No. What is left then? Cleansing fire. Hmm. <clears throat> Tell me, Tobias, what exactly is your plan concerning the cleansing of this city? God will recognize his own. More than once this city has risen from the ashes, hardened and purified by the flames. Interesting, isn't it, how... I mean, this is an example of extremism, religious extremism. You know, how somebody can be so devoted to God, or to their God, that they're willing to kill or to cleanse in that terminology the lives of human beings with the idea that you know it's not really a problem because when this person dies they will just go to meet God and they will face their inevitable judgment anyway it's quite a sick interpretation of what religion should mean or what spirituality or what God should mean Purification by fire has proved useful, but where do you stop? Burn the clothes? The buildings? 
The corpses? Worse? Your lack of faith is predictable. But my task is to convince rational minds like yours to see the light. This is God's will. You're mad and dangerous. You're nothing but a soulless butcher. I agree. A small time Torquemada. The Savonarola of Whitechapel. My son, if you think salvation is a free gift, go listen to the lies of that pompous fool, Joseph. Joseph, a fool? Vicar Larrabee of St. Mary's Church. While he continues preaching his fraudulent redemption, more and more people die in the streets. Uh, Tobias believes the vicar of St. Mary's Church, Joseph Larrabee, is preaching a false faith. He's level 5, this guy. We've got a lot of sick people here, don't we? So we need to craft three lots of... Was it three? Two lots of fatigue treatment. One bronchitis. We just can't... Can't do migraine. We had a bronchitis thing, didn't we? Or did we already give that to someone? No, we've got one here. Where is it? Here. So, oh yeah, all oh right. Yeah, we haven't spoken to him yet, but we've got all of his, um, all of his things, hints. Sometimes I see this one here that it's white. I feel like I haven't pressed it, but I know what I have. Me? Oh, it's quite a you. Oh, I see. Well, what do you mean? The beast. I have heard enough. Goodbye. Hmm. So now we're going to speak to Darius anyway, aren't we? Fancy bar. You never. Goodbye for now. You How did you become the local bully everyone is afraid of, Joe? There's no pride in roughing up poor bastards. But this is the only job I've found. And it pays well too. A job? So you're racketeering for someone else? I got enlisted by the wet boot boys, a gang from the docks. I'm their muscle for their dirty work. Mmm. Most people don't become thugs when unemployed. This is a choice you've made. I don't care what you think, sir. I'll do what I have to do for my own reasons, and that's that. I'm not sure Mr. Lewis would agree with your by all means necessary philosophy, sir. Oh, do you really think he's the poor victim here? Barrett can be as sneaky as anyone. Long ago, I even called the bastard my best friend. Really? John Barrett Lewis used to be good friends. Okay, it just says the same about him as well. May I do what? Not for this part of yeah, some of them, it's like they're still white here, but there's no seem... Unless maybe I've still got something to unlock. But it doesn't say I need a hint or anything like that. Like these do. Goodbye, Mr. Strange, Beast. I hadn't really noticed that before. Uh, the boy, did we talk to him? Good evening, Harry. Sure. This is one of the reasons, like, when I play these games, usually, 
you know, if I, um... If I play a game like this, similar like, like I was doing in Fallout 4, where you discover locations, I feel like I have to kind of do it all there and then. Because God help me trying to remember what I have and haven't done, you know? It's oh yeah, right. I remember coming up here now. I just can't remember if we talked to the boy, or did we just leave because we were in the middle of another mission. Pain and suffering in this world. So, I'm not bothered. Your father and Mr. Lewis used to be good friends. What happened, Harry? I was young then. I don't remember Mr. Lewis ever coming back again after my mother died. Or was it after my father started bullying him? I don't know. But you are not responsible for your father's actions. Am I not? Dad always says that he joined that gang for my safety. So if I wasn't born, people wouldn't be worrying about Colossus Joe. Have you tried speaking to Mr. Lewis about it? I don't go out often, but yes. It's going to turn the volume down, the music down a little bit. It's almost a little bit distracting from the conversation. And he scolded me and told me to leave him alone. I guess my father frightens him too much. Hmm. We could relieve his father of his burden. Well, oh, he's got fatigue, though. Do you need any medical help, young man? Yes, I do. We don't have the medicine for him. I will see you later. Goodbye, young man. Okay. Take I think care that's of yourself. probably what we got to last time, wasn't it? So, I'm not... Oh, bugger. Goodbye. I like that you can skip through the conversation if you want to. Uh, so it's behind us. Rat blood is not as potent or tasty as a human source, but it will partially refill your blood bar. Be interesting to see a game like this with more of a survival element to it. Like, you know, you're forced to eat and, f and drink blood because your character becomes weak or like turns into some sort of crazed, harder to control something or other monster if you don't feed. And you're then left with a choice as to whether you feed on humans and that has consequences versus animals, you know? I don't know if there's any games like that out, but it'd be interesting to play uh, to, to play them if there are. Let's make this this uh, fatigue seems to be a common common problem, doesn't it? Bronchitis, we've already got one ready. I think there were a few few people, weren't there, with fatigue. Bronchitis, migraine, these two, fatigue and fatigue. Clayton Darby and Harry Peterson. So, because there's no actual consequences for, for not... Um, eating people i mean like i don't i don't have to do it you know i just i guess i get my I, I don't get as much xp so i don't become as strong for like later enemies maybe the the fights are a little bit tougher so i'm kind of role playing like what i maybe would do if i was a vampire good evening harry May I come in? Sure. Even my dreams are soaked with glue. Yeah, so clearly you can play the game without so, feeding on anyone. May I ask you if I'm not bothered? But you're a vampire, you know, like... So you're gonna have to. You've got to. Like, do you need any medical help, young man? You yes, eat, I do. You could eat rats. You'll feel better with this. But you need to get a grip, young man. 
Medication alone won't cure melancholia. I'm not sure I'm happy with the idea of living long in a world like this. But I thank you for your concern, sir. How do you feel? I'm fine. I mean, it's not easy every day, but I'm fine. I'm just tired of being sick all the time. If only I could be tough, like... Well, you know. Mm. Speaking of which... Harry has a frail constitution and is often sick. I was just thinking then, I wonder whether or not... Like, if we heal these people, can they get sick again? again? Like, are the sicknesses dynamic? You know, they come and go. If you cure them, you, they can potentially get sick in some other way. He's recovering. No blood loss. Okay. He's not worth very much, though. 600 XP. I think I'd rather eat his dad. And he's level 3, though. We've got Benjamin Palmer. He's sick as well. We could eat him. What can you tell me about your father? My father is an idiot who makes idiot things. That's all I have to say. Makes idiot things? Forgive my bluntness, young man. But you don't seem happy living in Whitechapel. Why should I? I never wanted to come here in the first place. It was my father's decision. And look around you. Does this look like a nice place to live? Harry did not want to live in Whitechapel in the first place. This place is awful, I agree. But does that not mean your situation can only improve? That's exactly what my father says. Harry, you should be grateful for what you've got. But I wasn't even consulted when we moved here. If life here is so terrible for you, why don't you just leave this place? Have you ever spoken to your father about it? I... I don't go outside. It terrifies me so. Oh, this kid. I went outside once without my father noticing and I saw terrible things. Bloody and frightening things. So that's why you stay at home all day? For fear of the epidemic? I'm not afraid of disease or death, Dr. Reed. It's the living I'm afraid of. Mm, honestly, I'm almost thinking of putting this poor kid out of his misery. He doesn't want to be here, does he? He wants to go, man. So do we... We still got one more hint on him. All right. Goodbye, young man. Take care of yourself. Yeah, so you can. I think I think you've sort of got to role play it a bit. There's no there's no actual need to feed really. So if it's me, like I say, I'm kind of putting myself in the position of a vampire and thinking, you know, I, I, I'm going to eat people. That's the choice that I've made. I'm not going to be one of these vampires that feeds off rats. And I feel like one person a day is sufficient, you know, like I need to eat like three times a day. So when I'm a vampire, maybe as long as I get a good feed once a day, you know. And I don't know if we've eaten yet. I can't remember if we already eaten or not. Mr. Petrescu. And just maybe oh, one minute. I'll please. get you in a sec. You again. Go away. Maybe I would feed on people I didn't like, you know? How do I get my mesmerize up? Sir, wait. Stop this nonsense. I know Nurse Crane is here. Shall we speak man to man, you and I? <laughs> All right. Speak up. Don't you see we're on the same side? We fight to help the poor, sick, and abandoned. I'm nothing like you, Mr. Doctor. Yes, you are. You too believe in providing medical care without charge. You know what we have to sacrifice to make the world a better place. I have to admit your words have conviction. All right, I'll let you see Dorothea. 
Don't make me regret this, though. All right, so we're inside. If you want to talk to Dorothea, you must go across the courtyard and take the stairs. We've not been formally introduced. May I ask your name and occupation, sir? I am Darius Petrescu. I'm here to keep snitches and spies away from Dorothea. And I also run this little print shop. How did you meet Nurse Crane, Darius? Why does she trust you? I'm her oldest friend in England. Dorothea and I share many ideas about this country and about the country we left. You mean occupied Romania, don't you? Even if not directly, I fought against your enemies. Really? Then perhaps you have more in common with Dorothea than meets the eye, Dr. Reed. Do you have any family left, Mr. Petrescu? Children or grandchildren? Who knows? I have abandoned my people for so long, they might as well be dead. As dead as I am for them, I suppose. Do you need some help, Mr. Petrescu? I am very tired, but that is all. I don't need you, Doctor. Well, I think you do. Take this, and you'll feel better. Free drugs from an English doctor. <laughs> it must be my lucky day. Two thousand XP. I think I found. I think we found our uh, our dinner date. Do you have any? Fa Who knows? This war won't last forever. Did you ever think of returning to your country now it's free? No. I have taught strength and determination to my sons and daughters. I like him though. I'm an old dying man who only has memories of better times to cherish. Don't be embarrassed, sir. If you must know, my own father disappeared many years ago, and I forgave him. It's quite awkward to talk about our families like this, but... Thank you, Dr. Reed. I appreciate your trust. I know you fought for your country when it was occupied, Darius. Tell me more about it. I know my days are numbered, and I know I won't see my homeland again. But I fought for Romania all my life, and I will until my last breath. But Romania escaped the grasp of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. It's a free country again. But it's not the country I fought for. My homeland is not appeased, Doctor. And I still see a dark future ahead for my people. Tell me everything you know about Camellia, the mute florist. I do not believe in the afterlife, Doctor, but I'm almost convinced Camellia is an angel. She volunteered to give out our medical leaflets. Who is she, really? Do you know where she's from? She's not from around here, that's all we know. Camellia is not even her name. It's her favorite flower. You say she has no close family. Well, there's that awful poet who constantly follows her around like a lost puppy. A good man, for sure, but a very poor writer. Are you not worried for her safety? She is as brave as she is tough, and clever, too. If only I had met her when I was younger. Are you in love with Camellia, Mr. Petrescu? Don't be stupid. If I had met her when I was younger, we could have won our revolution. 
So Dorothy's real name is not Crane? Like myself and many people in this area. Dorothea is from occupied Romania. That's all you need to know. She seems important to the community. More than you can imagine. The West End does not want to hear of Whitechapel's misery. Dorothea is one of the few doing something about it. Tell me everything you know about- I do not believe- So I think that's basically it then for him, isn't it? So I'm gonna keep an eye on him. It says he's in recovery. I wanna know if his XP goes up. Like, does he fully recover? Do Goodbye, they, Mr. Petrescu. Do they fully recover? I hadn't really noticed. This is the way we came in, isn't it? It's locked. Find Dorothy in the dispensary. It's gonna be across the street. Looks like it. So these gates will be open now, right? Letter to Nurse Crane. My dear Dorothea. Okay, give me a second. When you read this letter, I will be on the boat that will take Anton and me to Brasov. England was not for us, and I confess I cannot wait to see again the proud hills of Transylvania. Soon as we are there, I'll promise I'll light a candle in the black church and pray for you to survive this terrible epidemic. I know that you do not agree with this decision and that you are determined to be more useful by helping our comrades exiled in the East End. But Anton cannot wait to return to our beloved country and see our long-awaited revolution boom, bloom. He is my husband. I will stay by his side. I know we had our arguments and our fights. I know you would have wanted me to stand by your side and help you manage this clinic of yours. But now that I'm leaving England, be assured that if anything would happen to you, if you ever were in great trouble or danger... I would come back immediately to London, with or without Anton. Please think of me as much as I think of you. I am your affectionate sister, Theodora. Alrighty. So she's maxed out. She's only level 2 as well. But she's a nurse. She's helping a lot of people. Interesting. I'll be there in a second. I'm just stealing lots of valuables from your uh, residence. What do we have here, nurse? Patient Raz Van Vasily. High fever running on three days. Complaints of dizziness, muscle aches, and head pain. Diagnosed with influenza. Treatment? Aspirin and salicin for the fever and discomfort. Liquids for dehydration. But he's having trouble keeping even water down. Thank you, nurse. Anything else I should know? He did lose consciousness this morning, but he's never had convulsions like these. 
He's not convulsing, he's choking. He's not getting any air. Scalpel, hand me that scalpel. What can I do, Doctor? I need to perform a tracheostomy. Short pipe. That rubber tube will do. We're going to cut a passage for air through the neck. Yes, Doctor. He's breathing again, but he's coughing up blood. Internal hemorrhaging. I need to make another incision into the chest cavity to drain the fluids from the lung. Prepare another tube. A thoracostomy? Doctor, we've nothing to fight the infection. We need an aseptic environment. Don't question me, nurse. I need a drain. Now! Yes, Doctor. He's still bleeding, Doctor. I'm losing his pulse. The drain must have punctured the intercostal artery. There's too much blood. Are you all right, Doctor? I... I can't see. Yes. Yes. I have this nurse. Allow me to finish the procedure alone. I need the room. I'd prefer to stay and see this through. This is my patient, Doctor. I have needle and thread for stitching the wound. Damn. Good. The stitches are holding. How's he doing? We're losing him. We've lost his pulse. He's dying, Doctor! What a waste of a meal. A dose of epinephrine, now. Yes, Doctor. We've lost the pulse. He... he's gone, Doctor. Nurse, we did everything we could. Truly? Everything you could. Is that how you'll report this in your log? Is this how the war went, piling up one poor corpse beside the next? This was not an influenza-induced seizure. I've never seen symptoms like these on the continent. Neither have I. But the previous symptoms leading up to this attack were the same, indistinguishable from the epidemic. No. There was something more vile in these reactions, something primitive. There have been numerous reports of mental breakdowns caused by the fever that accompanies the flu itself, Doctor. Yes, but... I'd best take some samples of the blood for analysis. feel like that was an inevitable outcome like I chose I asked for her to leave and she didn't you know so it's like almost like my choices there didn't really matter like he was destined to test my bedside manners he was destined to die I think he was destined to die that guy I wanted her out so I could eat him anyway put an end confront okay okay all right all right all right okay let's do it do I owe this courtesy? Just, 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 just it's a sec. Locked, all right. Okay, hold on. I'm still only level one up here. Do you have to practice more mesmerizing? Do you? Do you have to do it more on people to get better at it? Is that the th Is that how it works? And the only person here we can kill is this guy. At least from what I. Remember, out of everyone. I've got quite a few level oh and this Benjamin Palmer. Oh yeah. Where where did we see him? Is he the guy in the behind the church? No, that was him, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. I can't remember where we saw him. He's got a migraine. He's really low, low, low XP, but... This is an unfitting place for the illustrious Dr. Reed. 
You shouldn't be here. I suspect it was more than intuition alone that led you to us. So, how might I be of service, Dr. Reed? I don't like her. I don't know why. There's something about her. Alright, she's doing this job. She's trying to help people. But, like, you know how you tend to get a feeling about somebody in the way they present themselves to you? Everything, she, the way that she's presented herself to me so far makes me not like her. I've come to put an end to this insufferable blackmailing, Dorothy. Doctor, you think your warnings scare me? I've stolen and plied, blackmailed and lied, but what else am I to do? I'm all these people have. You've convinced me of the sincerity of your actions and their noble justifications. But all the same, blackmail is a crime, and it will stop, Nurse Crane. So, are you going to turn me over to the authorities? Mm. Nurse Crane. There is no question that the work you've done here is extraordinary, but this dispensary is incapable of coping with the outbreak. It's only a question of days before the situation at hand will overwhelm us. I cannot allow it. It's my duty to put an end to this immediately. Man, you're a vampire. I'm not ashamed. I did what was right. For in the end, I saved lives and you took them. But we had so much in common, Doctor. Don't you see that? Okay, we've leveled up. You're a vampire. You're not going to walk around like a politician. Did we just get... Wow, we've got a lot of XP. I forget how much. Oh, you can. Oh, we got 4,000 XP from that. So there's a bit of a story here. Mm, I don't know whether I want to read that now. I'll probably feel bad. As she died in my arms, she remembered all the legends from her homeland and found the energy to scold me for what I was and what I chose to do. Dorothea Krakinescu, Krakinescu never surrendered even in death. Mm, very cool. So there's, now we can eat more people. But we fed, so we're satiated. Our hunger has been satisfied, all right? It was just one of those things, you know? There's no, uh, there's just no getting around it, man. You're a vampire. You're not an investigator. You're not a politician. You're not a friend. You're a vampire. A vampire comes first. All these people will be dead within 50, 60 years, but you won't, you know? I cannot enter. Alrighty, carrying on now. So, return to Lady Ashbury, did that say? So we've got a few other places to explore, but I mean... I guess there's no rush, is there? There's no rush to explore them. I get a feeling what I've just done is going to have massive consequences for this... this area. But, you know, it's the way of the world. Honestly, like it, it keeps coming back to me. I'm not gonna say it a lot, but if this if the combat on here was just like as responsive as something like Assassin's Creed, and I'm not a big honestly, I'm not a big fan of Assassin's Creed. I like the the kind of newer games a lot more than the older ones. I've played a few of them anyway. 
it's like in that game every time you press a button there's an action there's a movement you know it's so responsive the combat if this if this had that man honestly my head would be exploding that that's that, that's a good thing but it's just it just lacks a little bit of that kind of connectivity with the character you know you constantly remember shut up It's like, there's like 15% or something, you know. I tend to work a lot in percentages. It's like 80% of the way there or something, or 85%. It's just, you're very regularly reminded that you're pressing buttons on a controller. Because you're, it's not responding exactly as you're pressing it, you know. It's, it's such a shame that that's not there, man. I'm loving everything about this so far, but it's that one, that that's the little splinter yet, you know, like you pull a splinter out of your body, there's that little sliver left that you can't, you can still feel the pain, you know. Oh man, honestly. But I'm loving like the, you know, the psychological stuff, the vampire stuff and the, the way it feels, all that stuff is just absolutely spot on, it's nailing it. I just wish that combat was just that tiny little bit more. Good evening, my dear colleague. I'm already excited about playing through the game again in a different way. You know, like already. I'd like to see what. Can be recycled into components. I think I'm gonna um I might just I might just keep recycling this stuff. Okay, so report oh yeah, yeah, okay, now I remember. I don't know if you've ever played Rise, Son of Rome. That's an awesome game. And that's another one that comes to mind with regards to the combat as to what this the could have been. Be proud of me. Are you alright? The bastard hit the wall next to me. I don't even know if he meant to miss. If you've been hurt, I can help you. I'm a doctor. Name's Albert. Remember it. Now bugger off. Now I remember, um... Yeah, it was these guys, wasn't it? These were the ones we met. So Albert has fatigue as well. Do you need assistance? Please. Feeling tired these days. There you go. Let's hope nobody steals it from you. Very funny. What happened? Did you really steal that man's medication? Hey, I didn't do anything, it ain't me. Really? Come on, man. Medication and drugs are a rare commodity in East London. So you picked an easy target, didn't you? Sod off, mister. You ain't got no clue what's going on here. Bastard was a soldier in the war, so now he's got the right to shoot me. It's true. I'm not familiar. He was a war veteran. Okay. With this part of town. Perhaps you could help me. I said sod off. Go find yourself another guide.
Goodbye, young man. I won't end up another drunk arsehole littering the streets. Not me. We've got 8,000 XP, guys. That's crazy. I'm already greedy for more. But I'm going to roleplay like, you know, we fed. We've already fed. So we're not going to go savage and just kill everyone. Maybe I'll do that again in a future playthrough to see what happens. But, you know, I'm going to play it as a semi-realistic, as realistic as you can play with being a vampire in the 1900s it would have been so much easier to be a vampire back then than it would be in the modern era I think in, if you were a vampire in the modern era one of the only ways to really do it would to become like a high level kind of politician you know not or not necessarily a public politician but I mean to be a kind of aristocrat you know in those in those sophisticated crowds where you don't you've got a lot of money you don't have to work you don't have to you don't have to go out in the daytime you could get away with it you know an ordinary person trying to exist only at night time you'd have to have a lot of connections to, to, to do it to make Hello, it work Mr. Petrescu. Hello, Dr. Reed. Come on in. Okay, I didn't uh, I didn't realize this was this. So this is the back entrance to his house. Yes. Tag. See, it's still showing up white. Who is she? She is, you say, well. It is so tempting. But we've already eaten. Okay, let's just leave before... Goodbye, Mr. Petrescu. Before bad things happen. Okay, alright, we'll, we'll get on with the main mission. Fancy bite. You never. Joe Peterson. He's the villain here, isn't he? But you seem to know each other. I'd known Joe for years. I saw him box once or twice. He was a friend then. But these days, he's just another thug. What can you tell me about Mr. Peterson? Besides his behavior toward you, obviously. Colossus Joe was a decent boxer. Good one, even. But after his wife passed away, he found every excuse to stop training. Just wanted to pick fights with everyone. Without making excuses for him, it's safe to say that despair can poison even the sanest mind. We've all had some rough times, haven't we? But most of us don't use our fists to see us through. And no one has ever stood up to this thug. Nobody will be fool enough to stand against the wet boot boy. Do you need help, sir? I only need you to... What do you know of Harry Peterson? The boy seems so fragile. Not like his father at all. Harry's a good boy, but he spends most of his time complaining. He's had it tough, all right, but he needs to grow a pair. What troubles him, exactly? Well, despite being his father's son, almost everything, I think. He never wanted to come to Whitechapel in the first place. Hates this place more than most of us. Goodbye for now, Mr. Lewis.
You again? What do you want this time? Harry doesn't seem happy living in Whitechapel. Why did you make him come here? I've always put my son's interests above everything else. Whatever he may think. Our house is small but affordable. The walls are thin, but the door is solid. You really love your son, don't you, Mr. Peterson? He's my pride and joy. Even if he hates me for the choices I make and pushes me buttons more than he should. Do you have any regrets? Only one. Not to have my beloved wife by my side. She died when Harry was little. My sweet Jane. She gave the boy confidence. Since the criminal nature of your job means you could be arrested, are you not afraid of what would happen to your boy if you were? No one will ever take my son away from me. If that ever occurred, I'd... I'd hunt the bastard down and rip off his head with my bare hands. Goodbye, Mr. Peterson. It's funny, right? You know, I've played a lot of get a lot of games. Is that this is that the same Good evening, Christine. Yeah, yeah. We've talked to her, haven't we? Um I've Goodbye, played a, I've played a lot of games. Take care of yourself as best you can. This 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 game already gives you you as the player quite a an intense sense of power knowing that you know that event that just transpired there with the nurse and we we you know we bit her it makes you feel powerful in the way that you know what you're doing well one the, the actual scene itself was quite powerful you know, just to watch it. But two, um, like you know that what you're doing is going to have a powerful impact in the world as well. So it's, it makes you actually feel powerful. I think there's a lot about it, like the, the music, especially probably the music, you know. And just knowing, like all of these encounters that that I'm having now there's a part of me that knows it could eat them and end them and remove them from the world and that that would have an effect on the world itself that's the very definition of power isn't it you know if you're a powerful individual your actions create ripples in the world around you and affect the people around you so I'm not talking about the sense of power as in like that, you know, like powers, like abilities. And no, that's the road that most games go down. Like a, a power, what do they call it? A power fantasy, you know, where you end up with all of these crazy abilities. In this, it's different. In a way, it's more subtle. But it's not. It's It actually, f you feel it. I feel more powerful in this than, say, Skyrim. Human blood. Walking around. Whoever left these marks did so deliberately. Walking around as the Dragonborn with all my magic powers and abilities. I already feel more powerful in this game as a person, you know. It's not super common. That's the reason I'm bringing it up. I don't know if there's many other games that I've played that approach it in the same way Ugh! <sighs> 
What the fuck was that? What did I just see then? I got very confused about what I just saw then. Maybe it was that. That's a demonstration of a different kind of power. Kind of physical power or raw power. But what I was talking about before is a sense of, you know, the ability to instill terror in the person in front of you and impact the game world at the same time. I haven't played many games where you have felt that before. Right. So that was kind of just a passing event, was it? going on in there it's got a little bit of an assassin's creed feel to it with the people around you in combat there you're surrounded by multiple enemies you're kind of dodging moving between each one just obviously without the fluidity and control of that game Stamina was low there. The pain will never stop. Suffering is part of the immortal condition. So the main consequence it looks like for dying is that we just... Human blood. Whoever left these marks did so deliberately. We resurrect with no, uh, not much blood. Do we have to do this fight again now? No. Die, what?
Oh, wow. Interesting. So they're fighting amongst themselves. But I don't really feel like taking on four of them. I'm wondering if this has happened because I killed the nurse. Good evening, Milton. Good evening, Doctor. Why do you have such a mediocre reputation among your colleagues, Milton? Fuck them. Nobody knows the horrors I've seen since working here. This city was sick long before the epidemic, Doctor Reed. I know it's a difficult task, but correct me if I'm wrong. Is this not the job you are paid to do? I've seen babies left to die while their brothers were properly fed. Underage girls and boys sold to all manner of perverts. I'm sorry, I don't know what to say. Yeah, exactly. We lack words. So excuse me if I don't look on the bright side of life. Do you need any medical help, Milton? I'm fine, Doc. Physically, at least. But I would give everything to be in a better place right now. Goodbye, Milton. But in the circumstances, I'm willing to give you the benefit of the doubt. Oh, is she behind the curtains? Ah, right, okay. Didn't really see the curtains here. Knew it. She's as naughty as we are. She needs to be more careful doing it like that in such a public place. I would ask you to avert your eyes, place. sir. Or did you not know it was rude to stare? I knew it. Speak up, Dr. Reed. I like a man who speaks his mind. Hiding your true appetites behind a facade of compassion. Bravo. Very clever indeed. Spare me your sarcasm, Jonathan. You are but newly born in this world. We are vampires. We live by leeching the blood from weaker prey. We are Darwin's next chapter, his cynical and perhaps ultimate expression. The situation is somewhat awkward nonetheless. I have not been observed sustaining myself for many decades. I have to say I'm a trifle embarrassed. Anyway, I have concluded my inquiries concerning your blackmailer. I see. Please excuse my agitated state. Under normal circumstances, I wouldn't let anyone see me in this condition. The case is closed. Permanently. You will not be bothered anymore by the woman. And who was this woman? If you must know, she worked under my employ as Nurse Crane. But I'll wager that's not what will be written on her gravestone. You killed her? Is that what you consider discretion and diplomacy, Dr. Reed? I did what I thought was best, and acted accordingly. You will learn that trust is a rare and precious commodity in the Immortals' world, my young doctor. And your actions have not induced me to offer you my support. What are you talking about? 
I literally killed the woman who you who you had a problem with and then I walk in on you feeding on somebody out here in public and you're having a go at me for diplomacy I've been hearing a voice talking in my head is this some kind of insanity it feels like the voice of the vampire that created me Hush. Tell no one this. It would be unwise to talk of such things amongst British immortals. Speak no more of your maker. Mm. How could this cause offense? Only the powerful immortals can mentally call to their progeny. No vampire or hunter will sleep easy knowing that an unidentified elder is stalking the streets of London. Oh, wowee. Now that's got me interested. Excuse my forwardness, but are you my maker? Me? Goodness, no. Only a foolish immortal would create a progeny without taking precaution, and I'm no fool. A vampire? Is that what I am? What we are. Such a crude word, defined by penny dreadfuls and drunken hacks. No, you are now an Ekon, and that you shall remain. So, it sound, you know, some of these questions sound like they're a little bit out of sync. But maybe let's just put it down to Jonathan having a bit of a difficult time still transitioning over. So we are Ekon. How can I identify us amongst other vampires? How to put it? All Ekon are vampires. But all vampires are not Ekon. We are a... But a branch of the immortal tree. Are you an Ekon too? Yes, I am. We are the closest thing to what man refers to as vampires. Forget what you think you know about us. I don't understand. Why was I created and then left for dead? That is a question only the one who made you can answer. It's not normal practice. I doubt even if you find him, he will answer you, considering how cruelly he treated you. I'd like to avoid creating another vampire by mistake anyway. Tell me, how is it done? <sighs> the process is dangerous. It could even kill your potential progeny. If you did decide to sire an offspring, they must drink of your blood, Jonathan. So me being a vampire could have been a mistake? I very much doubt it, Jonathan. Contrary to the legends, it is not as simple to make another vampire by just biting someone. Why did you save me in the canning factory? I could hardly stand by and watch such a promising young blood as yourself be torn to shreds by some gutter scowl. William Bishop wasn't the vampire that created me then. No, Jonathan. Whatever their strength and demeanor, Skulls are the progeny of careless vampires. It cannot be the other way round. What type of vampire is a skull? Not a true vampire. The deformed offspring of lesser vampires. It is a shame these creatures run wild, slaves to their baser instincts. Mm. When she says lesser vampires, I'm wondering if she means like new vampires who've created others too soon. They've tried to sire an offspring too soon, or does she mean... I don't quite know exactly what she means by lesser vampires. Why does Dr. Swansea allow you to feed on the patients of the hospital? Dr. Swansea is a good and compassionate man. Oh, he He's knows. trying to find a solution for our... 
Hunger. Until that happens, he is clever enough to understand that I only feed upon the dying. What do you know about this Brotherhood of St. Paul's Stole? The Brotherhood is well known amongst London Vampire Society. As long as our kind is discreet, and as long as they do not interfere, we have come to a mutual understanding. And no one suspected you of the murders? As you well know, suspicion has recently fallen on me of killing for pleasure. But you have my word, Jonathan. I take no pleasure in taking a life. I know this is beyond the pale, but may I inquire your age? Really? And I thought you were gentlemen. If you must know, I'm 27. I've been 27 for a long time now, and 27 I shall remain. Very well. But I believe there is more to this than you are saying. A lady has to have some secrets. And who bestowed upon you this eternal youth? My maker. He left this isle a long time ago. Are there many vampires here in London? Immortals are of a rare breed, and we often tend to hide. But you may occasionally meet some of us at night. Do you know any of them? Have you an idea of the identity of the vampire who attacked me? You mean your maker? No, Jonathan, I have no clue. But I fear he or she is as careless as cruel. To let you discover your new condition by yourself. What do you mean? Every now and then, you may discover an immortal in the deep of the night. But we are a rare and reclusive breed. Our progeny is almost never accidental. Will they all be as affable as you, my lady? I do not see why not. But remember, even the shark smiles before he bites. That sounds like a lesson from experience. Vampire politics are as intricate and sometimes tedious as a game of chess in a gentleman's club. I've learned from experience it is best to decline to play. When I awoke, changed, I was chased and attacked by vampire hunters. Prepared and well trained. Though I can't be certain. More than likely it was the once glorious guard of Prewin. Yeah, it was, wasn't it? You make them sound like some sort of cult. More a society. And like all the best ones, a secret society. I thought them almost gone. But it seemed they have been recruiting. Right, so the... The... the, the uh, this kind of answers a question I brought up a couple episodes back about... It's weird that you've got these people walking around who know what are vampires, the guards, who are fighting us. And you've got these skull beasts. And then you've got the ordinary people, and none of the ordinary people mention anything about vampires. And they seem to think that these skull beasts are just people who have been badly, infect badly affected by the virus. So I guess we're in a world where people don't really know about vampires. But well, you've got these secret societies and groups of certain individuals who do, who just keep it under wraps. Um, I guess if they're talking about vampires, you know, they'll probably end up in a hospital. And, uh, you know, so I guess that's where we're at on, the, on that question. Once glorious, but still dangerous. They have seen better days, but all fanatics are dangerous. You would be wise to stay clear. They are sworn to destroy our kind. I've been away from London and England for three years. This isn't the city I remember. Things have gone from bad to worse here, Jonathan. I've lived in this city for a long time, and I've never seen it like this. What is it you fear? Fear has long since flown this form. 
But there is something malevolent circling us. I feel fear is merely waiting in the wings. The Spanish flu has hit London that bad. Yes, but it's not just that. I've heard things. Things I've not heard for a very, very long time. Ooh. There are whispers in the shadows. Like what? Something far worse than the Spanish flu is here in the city. Oh, what? Nothing else? You're not going to give me any anything else? I've been... Things have... I bid you farewell. For now, my lady. I must quickly analyze the blood I took from Nurse Crane's patient. Okay, what do we got here? Increase the stamina regeneration rate by 50% for 15 seconds. Okay. So I can upgrade that now. Can't upgrade this anymore. Or this one. Oh, so I need it. I need a used machete to level it up. Right, I didn't realize. So I need to be keeping an eye out for those weapons then on vendors, right? Interesting. Rasan Vasily was infected by Spanish flu, but also has the highly unstable blood of the skulls. Is the London vampire epidemic transmitted through the flu? I should talk to Dr. Swansea about it. Right. Chapter 3, Family History. Establish a connection between vampire epidemic and Spanish flu. My recent trip to White Whitechapel proved to me how desperate the situation is for Londoners and how they almost cope with this threat the best way they can. Causes and effects seem irremediable irremediably intertwined is that supposed to say irredeemably no maybe i don't know seem the causes and effects seem intertwined dorothy crane chose to steal and blackmail to gather enough money to illegally heal the poor but i also saw her desperately trying to try to save a dying patient in her rudimentary dispensary in the end, we both failed saving the poor man, but I am now convinced the Spanish flu must be linked to the vampire epidemic. For my analysis of Razvan's blood revealed the same highly unstable blood I have already observed on William Bishop. I should report... <coughs> I should report all... The <coughs> oh, I couldn't, couldn't pause the recording in time. I should report all these events to Dr. Swansea and ask for his medical and vampire expertise. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. Okay, so we're going to sleep. What happened? So we've got a couple of these still to do as well. He's good. We could eat him. But not tonight. We've already fed haven't we? We've already fed. So I'm sure we're fine. What was his mission? Oh, it's done. 
But there's still three, uh, three hints left to find on him. Dr. Thoreau. And there's another doctor we haven't spoken to yet. Treatment for headache. We have that, don't we? We just don't have migraine. Where am I looking? Ah. Oh, I see. Right, there's another page here. I didn't really notice that. So these are the these are the district menus for the individuals. Yeah, so I realize I've actually killed the pillar. I've eaten the pillar. That's bad, isn't it? That's bad for that area. That's going to have bad effects. But it is what it is. It's done now. And, uh, oh, here we go. There's a couple of these, I think. We've read that one. If you ever suspect someone to be a vampire, don't try to kill it yourself. You have no chance. Instead, contact me or try to inform a professional vampire killer. These men and women are rare, but they know what to do against these evil creatures. It even seems that some of them are working together under the name of the Guard of Pruen, a paramilitary organisation dedicated to the eradication of the vampires in London. They are your friends. You are not alone. Solutions exist. Be smart. Spread the word. Clarence Crossley. For more information, contact me directly. And we've read that one, The Need for Blood. Oh yeah, we've read this one too. Yeah, we read that one. Uh, Alright, I guess we just sleep then. Okay, so I've got uh, Spring Coagulation Shadow Mist. Ooh, I could get an ultimate, guys. And, and uh, Shadow Mist and Autophagy. Alright, let's level up then. I, I was looking at something else, but I can't remember what it is now. Here. Rage. You lose control and let the beast take over for a short time. The beast teleports itself to all enemies around you and strikes them with furious blows. Some abilities are so powerful that even vampires fear them. Rage is one of them. The vampire loses control and unleashes the beast within to do their dirty work. The beast teleports itself on targets around them striking with an unfettered fury because of its dark nature. This type of ability cannot be used too often. Just release the beast, my friend. It's more satisfying than you think. So that only costs a thousand. Abyss. You create a shadow vortex at your target's feet. Coming to life, the shadows interrupt an enemy in the area. And inflict tremendous damage. Some abilities are... Oh. Abyss is one of them. It says the same thing. The vampire concentrates, summoning the shadows in their purest, darkest form. These shadows capture the vampire's prey and toys with it like a cat with a mouse. After a brief moment, the shadows strike, impaling their prey. Because of its dark nature, this type of ability cannot be used too often. Even a powerful vampire is terrified to be seized. By the tendrils of darkness. And a blood cauldron. You focus your power to boil your target's blood. Causing it to violently explode. Dealing damage to the target and anything nearby. The vampire concentrates their power on one target and makes the victim's blood boil. Through this process the vampire will regenerate and absorb part of the target's blood. The vampire will release their prey after a few seconds, leaving damaging blood cells within them. These cells will continue to impact their host before exploding after a short time. The blast will affect any living creature near the host. Controlling blood is one thing. Modifying the blood cells is another. So I f feel like I'm most tempted emotionally to take rage. Logically, I think Blood Cauldron is going to uh, be 
be the best. That that one sounds like it's going to be the most useful in a fight. But emotionally, I'm most interested to see what rage looks like. That's my uh, my temptation talking. All right, heads, we're going for rage. And platypus, which is the Australian coin. Yes, it does have a platypus on the other side of the coin. Uh, tail, that's tails. So heads or platypus. Heads is rage. Heads it is. The late, great, apparently, Queen Elizabeth. Okay, rage it is. Why not? Oh, we can't. It's level 14, so that's two levels away. Um, Increase blood capacity. Plus 20. Yeah, I like the sound of this one. To increase our blood. Blood absorption when using bite. Dude, we are so powerful. The sound is great in this game. Like, it's it's uh, it's visceral. The sound is visceral. There's a lot of elements of this sound design that have they're visceral. Three serums. Uh, not too fussed about that right now. Yeah, let's let's level up this our heal rate when using bite. Now you've got all, I don't know if you're probably not listening to this with headphones on, maybe some of you are, but there's all sorts of whispers going on in the background, like reminding me of, uh, you know, as if there's a darkness hovering behind me or tempting me to inquire. So our, our bite is now extremely powerful. I might even level up rage straight up. Hear that? You have to listen to this with headphones on. Shadow Veil. Drain your stamina to fade into the shadows and become inv- Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, I like I like this one. This one's actually not a bad skill, this one. Spring or spring. Okay, so how does how how is 120 damage or 15 stun and 50 damage? Yeah, I quite I quite like the uh, the stun effect because that's what allows us to bite. Okay, so we've gone down this road. Very good. And are there any others that we can get at all? Not that one. That one's quite good too. I found shadow mist. Can't do this one at all, no. Can maybe level up one of these, can I? Here we go. Increase your stamina. That's a nice nice little bonus. So we have just become way more powerful. These ones I'm not too fussed about. They're sort of real kind of like last resort, aren't they? And we've just like I said, we've just become way more powerful. And got ourselves an ultimate. So I look forward to seeing what that looks like. Fight against the rise of crime. Yet more proof of the violence and danger that lurks in London. A young nurse, Miss, Dor Miss Dorothy Crane, was found dead yesterday morning behind the walls of what seemed to be an illegal dispensary where the local sick sometimes went to get medical support from unidentified activists. There was no doubt about the cause of Miss Crane's passing. The poor woman had died from a blood loss following what the police described as a massive wound to her throat. That macabre scene was but the epitome of the current situation in Whitechapel. Its inhabitants are criminals, bandits or madmen disguised as citizens of London. Interestingly, no hospital admitted to have employed the victim. 
The dispensary has immediately been closed by decision of the London City Council's Board of Health. As always, the soft and liberal minds already object that this closure of the only local medical facility can only increase the mortality rate and put the locals' health at further risk. One cannot help but dread the time when these people's brutality will seep through the walls of the city itself. It is our role as civilised people to protect our families, our brethren, and of course, ourselves. SLA. So we've dropped down to critical. And they're hostile now. These guys are still stable. We haven't even been there yet, have we? Oh dear. Shit. Oh, I see, right, so now... Like, we can make it um, part of our mission, I guess, to go around curing as many of these as we can in order to, like, keep that town healthy. So I wonder why these guys got so sick. Neuralgia. Now, if you look at his symbol, it's got three on it. There, theirs only has one of the germs. Interesting. I wonder if that means he's highly contagious. And let's say we don't cure these people this time round. Is it likely then that these more people will become infected here. If that's the case, it doesn't really tell me that. At least, if it's mentioned it in the game already, I didn't see it or I forgot. The docks. I've been encouraged to go back to the docks as well, so... I've really just kind of been following the story and where it takes me. But well, I guess there's no reason why I can't just go back to the docks anyway. Anyway, that's us. Level 16. With plenty more people to eat. Still. Still lots of people to eat. I wonder if you can just kill everyone. Maybe you can. Maybe you can just eat everyone when you're level when you're high enough level. So this, uh, the docks is hostile. Oops. Pembroke Hospital. Oh, right, I see. Sorry, no, hostile is down here. Never mind. So nowhere is hostile yet, but these are critical. I think it sh probably should be a bit of a... What, what, what's this here? Your actions have impacted the borough's economy. Your choice concerning the community pillar have been reported by the press. Yeah, we read that. Um, maybe we should like try to take care of some of these guys just to try to keep this as high as it, as we can now that we've killed the pillar and uh, it's obviously looking pretty dire at the hospital too so I guess that's something for us to look at when we return which will be tomorrow um it's all good. I don't, again, like I said this at the end of the last episode, I don't really have much to say. Then I went on talking for about five minutes. But this time I don't. It's all good. I, I really, I, I'm enjoying the game. What's going on with our pants down there? It's a bit of a graphical glitch. Um, I'm enjoying the game. Yeah, there's there's those couple of points. And I think part of, like, part of what I'm sort of saying about a couple of the elements that I would tweak... I think I am going to maybe like leave those sort of things to do a review. That way I don't have to bring them up as much. And I can quiet down that part of me that wants to complain. I'll say, listen man, leave it for the review. We don't need to get into it in this video, you know. Like, let's just get into the gameplay. And then that part of me that wants to say all these... What is going on with my pants down there? It wants to have all these opinions about how it feels about this and it feels about that. We can just express that in the review video all right and and put it in a more kind of concise um comparison with all the other features in the game too and i'll put a lot of thought into it uh, that's all i had to say it's good i'm happy things are good and i can't wait to get back into this tomorrow ladies and gentlemen thank you for joining me for this this episode of vampire 
I hope you're enjoying it. And uh, le next week we've got Miss Survival. I know we're we're still early. This is the second day, right? Second day of this game. We've still got like four days to go. I think we will get through the whole game. From what I what I feel, we're we're making decent progress. And uh, next week we've got Miss Survival anyway. So, thank you for joining me for this episode. I hope to see you in the next one. Goodbye for now.